السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها المسلمون to the long time listener and first time visitor we welcome you to this episode now without further ado let's get into it بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد if I could just have your attention for the next few minutes, Bithilahi Ta'ala, I'd be greatly appreciated. Imam ibn Qayyim, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, Kullu ilmin wa amalin la yazidu al iman wal yaqeen quwwatan fa madhkhul. He said that every knowledge, every action, every deed that does not increase the iman and the certainty in strength. That it is entered upon. Naam, it is entered upon. For madhul. Madhul bi ayy shay. Entered upon by what? Qal al ulama. The ulama they mention a madhul bi shay in min shirk. Meaning that it has been entered upon with something from shirk. Wa'iyadu billah. Whether that be showing off or doing things to be heard or whatever the case is, not having the right intention, right? So our knowledge and our actions should be increasing us in iman. It should be increasing us in certainty. Bithnilahi ta'ala. So with that being the case, and I want you just to have this in mind. Because whenever we sit down with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should get up from it and we have increased. So if you hear a khutbah, yawmul jumu'ah, na'am, where the ayat of Allah are being recited therein, and the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam are being recited therein. Then we should leave out of that, and our iman and our certainty should be higher. When we come across videos like this and clips and, and, and the like, where we're being reminded about Allah subhanahu wa taala, when we're being reminded about the affairs of our religion, the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they are being recited and narrated unto us. Then we this should increase our iman. This should increase our certainty. It should boost our iman, bithnilahi ta'ala. And when we find that we sit in these type of situations and we sit, we read the Quran and the like, and we get up and we have not increased in this extent, then there's a problem. So we need to check ourselves, bithnilahi ta'ala. So I say that because we really have to have self reflection. It is important that we reflect upon ourselves. I say that because we have to be honest with ourselves in, and in our assessment of ourselves. Naam? And when we find that we have to increase, when we find that we need to become better, then we strive to become better, bithnilahi ta'ala. This is a life mission that we all should be on. So that being the case, inshallah ta'ala, if I could just have your ear for a moment. You know, there comes a hadith, an tamim al dari and it's a famous hadith. Fima rawahu muslim fi sahihi and what Imam Muslim, he brings inside of his collection of sound and authentic hadith, where he said, and then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ad-deenu nasiha, that the deen is nasiha, ad-deenu nasiha, naam, the deen, the religion is nasiha, it is being sincere, it is giving sincere and good advice, naam, when the Sahaba, when they heard that, they said, "Qulna liman?" They said, "To who, O Messenger of Allah?" فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لله ولكتابه ولرسوله ولأمة المسلمين وعامتهم. He said, "Being sincere unto Allah, being sincere unto His book, being sincere unto His Messenger, being sincere to the Muslim rulers." And being sincere to the general masses of the Muslims. Naam. Are we sincere to Allah? So I want us to ask ourselves. Are we sincere to the book of Allah? Is what I want us to ask ourselves. Are we sincere to the Messenger of Allah? 
sallallahu alaihi wasallam is what I want us to ask ourselves: Are we sincere to the Muslim rulers, and do we show sincerity to our Muslim brothers and sisters? Now, this hadith is a, a tremendous hadith, and this hadith is from Jawam al Kalim. It's from those short articulations that have a very vast meaning. So, and we can go over the explanation of this hadith, and it'll take a very long time. But inshallah ta'ala, I want us to, to reflect on our sincerity and how sincere we are when it comes to our brothers and our sisters. How sincere are we truly when it comes to the Muslim rulers? Do we interact with them, with, with them in a way that screams sincerity or do we interact with them in a way that screams treachery? Because undoubtedly from sincerity, from being sincere, is that we give advice, nusiha, is that we give advice to our Muslim brothers and sisters. We call them to what is good, we forbid them for what is wrong, we advise them. And that advice is done in a way where it's not to shame them, it's not to belittle them, it's not to put them down, it is not to disgrace them, but it is to advise them, to call them to what is correct. Now, and this is from the reasons that, and from the wisdoms, why the advice to the ruler is done in private. So if we have the opportunity to write the ruler a letter to advise him, then we should do it. If we have the opportunity to write the ruler an email to advise him, then we should do it. If we have the opportunity to sit with the ruler and to speak to them and to advise them in private, then we should do it. This is a good thing that we call them to what is good and caution them from that which is evil. Now, once we have given the advice, if they take it, alhamdulillah. If they don't, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. But we will have fulfilled our obligation. Naam. From sincerity to the Muslim rulers is that we make dua for them. We make dua that Allah Ta'ala, He guides them. That Allah Ta'ala, He rectifies them. That Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, He makes them from those who know what He loves and that which He is pleased with. That Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, He gives them the tawfiq to be good Muslims and to act in a good way and to act in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of this is from being sincere and showing sincerity to our Muslim brothers and our sisters. Naam. And I hope you understand what, 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 uh, what is meant by this. That we have to be genuine in wanting good for people. Genuine in wanting to see the people benefit. Genuine in wanting to see harm averted from our Muslim brothers and our sisters. So the Prophet wasallam, he's told us here in this hanith that from the deen is being sincere to the Muslim rulers. Is to being genuine to the Muslim rulers. Now I know a lot of people, they may hear this and not like that. A lot of people may hear this and they may have something negative to say. But these are the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are not my words. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, And for the leaders of the Muslims, that we are what? That we are genuine and sincere unto them, that we want their good and that we advise them and that we give them good counsel when we have the opportunity to, and when we don't, we make dua for them. This is all enters into being sincere to the Muslim rulers. And likewise, to our Muslim brothers and sisters, are we sincere to each other? Naam, are we sincere to each other? Because we're supposed to be. We're, support, we're supposed to want the best for each other. We're supposed to yani, become happy when our brothers and sisters benefit. We're supposed to be sad when our brothers and our sisters, they receive a loss. All of this enters into being genuine and being sincere to our Muslim brothers and sisters. These are the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't say those who were Arab only. He didn't say those who were black only. He didn't say those who were white only. He didn't say those who were male only. He didn't say those who were female only. Those who were young only. Those who were... Oh, no. He said, and for the general masses, him. Naam. So are we sincere to each other? And are we genuine when it comes to dealing and interacting with each other? Because we should be, we have to be. This is from the deen. Okay? This is from the deen. There comes a hadith and Jarir bin Abdullah. He mentioned, he said, Qala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam ala sam'i wa ta'a. He said, I gave my pledge of allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I will be obedient to the Muslim ruler, that I will hear and obey and be obedient to the Muslim ruler. He said, فَتَلَقَّنَنِي فِي مَا أَسْتَطَعْتِ He said, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
He instructed me to act to the best of my ability. Naam, to do what I was able to do to the best of my ability. Muslim, And that I give advice, sincere advice, that I'm genuine and give sincere advice to every Muslim. This is what he gave his bay'ah, his pledge of allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon. Again, there may be people, they don't like this. They saying, oh, you people, you Wahhabi people, right? And all the other names they invent for us and make up for us and things like that. When they hear the likes of these ahadith, they don't like to hear that. They don't like to hear uh, that we have to listen and to obey the ruler. Even though the ruler may not be genuine to us, even though the ruler, he may not act in our best interest, even though the ruler, he may not, he may not, he may not, Still, that's on him. He'll have to deal with that on the day of judgment. He'll be questioned about that and held accountable about, for that. Now, that's on him. But that has nothing to do with us. We still have to do what we're supposed to do. We still have to play our part. And our part is to do what? Is to obey the Muslim ruler. Is to give sincere advice to the Muslim ruler if we have the opportunity. If we don't have the opportunity to give advice, then we, then we mention the advice is someone who we know can give the advice. If we don't have anyone that we can even give the advice to the ruler by proxy to, then we make dua. We make dua for them. And we ask Allah Ta'ala to guide them. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to rectify their affairs, so on and so forth. This is from being sincere to the Muslim ruler. From from obeying the Muslim ruler. So what the Prophet, this is what this Sahabi made bay'ah to the Prophet وسلم, on. Naam. Also, in that he will give sincere advice to every Muslim. That he will give sincere advice to every Muslim. So we have to be of those who are giving sincere advice to one another because that helps us have unity. That helps strengthen our bond with each other. That helps strengthen our solidarity. Okay? We're not going to be able to achieve solidarity and sustain it if we are being treacherous one to another, if we are not giving each other good advice, if we see a brother going in the wrong direction, we don't say nothing, and then it becomes, no, and then it becomes, now it brings brought to light later that we saw that brother going in that direction, and we didn't say anything. Do you think that brother is gonna um, like us? Do you think perhaps that brother may have a problem with us? That we saw him going down the wrong way, we didn't say nothing. Maybe he didn't realize it. Maybe it wasn't intentional. Maybe he didn't realize it. Maybe he thought it was good. Maybe he was misled. Maybe he thought it was okay. But we didn't say anything. And now it comes out later after he got hurt. Now it comes out later after he went through a bad situation. It comes out later that we knew and we didn't say anything. You think he's going to be happy with us? Or is he going to be upset with us? He's going to be upset, undoubtedly. Even individuals, when you give them the advice, they may not like it at that time. Nah, they may not like it. But do you know what happens? Even if they didn't like it. If things don't go right, they're not going to blame you. They're not going to say you didn't tell them. They can't come on a day of judgment and say, oh Allah, he didn't say anything. They can't say any of that. And you know what? They might actually respect you for it. They might actually respect you for it. Even though they may not like you, right? But they may, they may have respect for you and say, well, at least he tried to tell me. I don't like him that much. But at least he tried to warn me. Now, they may, may respect you for that. In any event, it will help us stay together. It will help us be together. It will help strengthen our bond. And we have to understand how important our bond is and, and, and how important it is for us to try to strengthen our bond with each other. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us in a hadith that is authentic, collected by Muslim, in the shaytana qad ayyasa in ya'budahu al-musallun fi jazirat al-arab. He said that the shaytan has forsaken hope. He has given up hope that he'll be worshipped by those who pray in the Arabian Peninsula. So he, therefore, he puts his energy into causing division and strife amongst them. That's where he puts his energy, into breaking our ranks, breaking our solidarity, breaking our unity. It's important enough for the shaytan to want to destroy our unity. That with within itself shows you that our unity and our solidarity is very important. It's very important. If it wasn't, shaitan wouldn't bother with it. 
He wouldn't worry about it. He cannot get us to worship him. So therefore he goes to what? Getting us to be divided and have enmity and rancor amongst ourselves. So us being united is very important. And from, the, and from what we need to be united is we have to be genuine to each other. We have to be sincere in our interactions and our dealings with one another. We have to want good for one another. The same good that we want for ourselves, we need to want that for our brother. The same evil that we don't want for ourselves, we should not want that to reach our brothers and our sisters. Those things that will make us happy, we want our brothers and our sisters to experience happiness like that with those things that will make them happy. Those things that will make them sad, that will make us sad, we don't want that for our brothers and our sisters at all. We have to be together and we have to learn how to treat each other better and we have to learn how to close the roads that the shaitan may traverse upon to bring about disunity amongst ourselves. So we can't just treat each other in any old type of way with the attitude, well, I'm going to do it like this and I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to say what I want. And if you got a problem with it, I don't care. That's, that's on you for whatever. I'm going to do what I want. And if someone doesn't like it, then I don't care. That's on them. I, you know, I don't care. No, I mean, yeah, subhanAllah, you have to care. You have to care because you have to make sure that you are not part of the problem. You may say something that is correct. That don't mean you're not part of the problem. Let me give you a simple example. Let me give you a simple example where sometimes truth, uh, you know, being too, 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 um, saying a word that is true could still be insensitive and cause harm. So you got to be careful what you say and how you say it. Okay. If your wife comes to you and she says, hey, look at me and this avaya, this avaya makes me look fat. What you going to say if it makes her look fat? What are you going to say? Yeah, you look real fat right now. Does this guy make me look fat like a whale? Like a cow? You going to tell your wife that? Of course not. But you may say, but, but, but it's true. Look how big it make her look. She looks like a hot air balloon. Look at her. You going to tell your wife that? Of course not. Because you know it's going to hurt her feelings. You can't, you can't fall back and say, no, but it's true though. So what? You don't say that to her. Okay, you say something to her that will be gentle. You say something to her like, you know, that outfit, it doesn't it doesn't work for you. That outfit is not it's not the best. I don't like that outfit. That's it. I don't like that one. I don't like that one. The other one you had on before was better. That one looked better. Now. You find a way to 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 avoid answering directly that question. You understand? Because you don't want to hurt her feelings. So it's not a situation of, I'm just going to tell the truth and, you know, whatever, people get mad. You have to make sure that you present it in a manner that is not provocative. You present it in a manner that is not going to hurt feelings. You present it in a manner that is not going to ruffle feathers to the best of your ability. You know, I'm saying it's to the best of your ability because sometimes you can say things, everything right, and it still, it still ruffles feathers. You can say it at the right time, right place, in the right way, right tone, and people are still going to take offense to it. You, you, you have nothing to do with that. That is beyond your ability. But if you have the ability to say it in an easygoing way, in a way that it is furthest away from causing problems, and you decide not to take that and to be reckless and just to say whatever because you feel whatever, then, yeah, then that's on you. You know, that's on you. So you have to be very careful in what you're saying and how you say it. I hope that makes sense, right? I hope that makes sense, right? But so we have to do this because we have to maintain our bond. Just like we want to maintain that good relationship with our wife, right? By not telling her that this outfit makes her look horrible. You understand? We have to make sure that we maintain that good relationship with the Muslims as a whole, that we don't do things that's going to cause problems. We don't do things that's going to cause division, strife, and enmity, and rancor amongst our ranks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Obey Allah and obey the messenger. And don't argue, don't debate, don't yani, have a falling out with each other. Because if you do this, your, um, your courage, it will depart and you're going to lose your strength. 
Your courage is going to depart and you're going to lose your strength. You're not going to be as strong. When we're together, we're strong. When we break up and separate, we become weak. So if we, if, 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 if we have these falling outs and these disagreements and so on and so forth, and it leads to our separation, then we're going to lose our strength and we're going to be weak. It's not always going to be rosy. It's not always going to be the ideal situation. And brothers have to understand that. So when a situation comes up and it's not the ideal situation, it's already tense. Don't do anything to make it even worse. But you have brothers who are very insensitive, very insensitive. So we have to remember that sometimes things are not going to be in the best way. And depending on what we do, we can make it even worse. So Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ so be patient, right? Because maybe some things you want to talk about. But you got to let some of that go and talk about other things. So you got to be patient. Maybe some things you want to talk about. Nah. But to make matters worse or to become rigid where there exists some type of fluidity is, is making things worse. So we have to be patient. We have to be patient with each other, have to be patient how we deal with each other, have to be patient how we talk to each other, have to be patient how we communicate with each other. We have to be patient how we deal with each other. We have to be sincere and genuine to one another. Because if we don't and we break up and we divide, we're going to lose our strength and our courage. We're going to fall by the wayside. Illa liqa. Astaghfirullah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.